In this video, I'm gonna go through and help out with some of these word problems from 10.24, which are trig word problems, but they're ones that involve multiple angles, so there's multiple steps for you have to solve your problem. All right, so one thing you'll see a lot in these problems is they'll use angle of elevation or angle of depression. So angle of elevation, all right, for both of these, we always start with the horizontal line. And if I go from that horizontal and I look up, all right, it creates this angle here, which is my angle of elevation. All right, so elevation uh, means you're going up. Angle of depression means you're going down. So I start with that horizontal and I go down and that gives me this angle here. So my angle of depression. All right, so this is just helpful in knowing that when they're talking about specific angles, all right, they're kind of talking about specific things in the picture. All right, so we're just gonna go through a bunch of examples. They're all slightly different. Uh, but if you're just drawing a picture, figuring out where your right triangles are, uh, you can use Sokotoa to figure out extra information. All right, so we have this airplane uh, that's approaching in a straight line. It's maintaining a constant altitude. All right, and she measures an angle of elevation of 17 degrees to the plane at point A. So if I draw the picture to start, all right, it's an angle of elevation. So looking flat and then upward at the plane at 17 degrees, that is going to be point A, all right, and that gives me a right triangle. And one thing I know with this right triangle, this point A represents where the plane is, and the plane is flying 7,500 feet up. Now my next situation, the plane's moved, and now she measured an angle of elevation of 38 degrees. Right, 38 degrees is a slightly bigger angle to the plane. And again, the plane is flying kind of straight, so this side here is also 7,500. All right, so that's the picture for this. And what do we want to do? We want to figure out how far it is from A to B. So we're actually trying to find this X value there. If you notice that X value is not on any of our triangles, but if we use our picture and just kind of slide this straight down, we'll see it's actually the same as this distance here. And this isn't exactly like problems we've done before, but similar in a way that we can't figure out X directly. It's not part of any of our right triangles. What we can do is we can figure out a part of our blue right triangle. So we can figure out this big distance. Let's call it like, I don't know, lowercase a. And then for the red right triangle, I can figure out this distance here, lowercase b. And if I subtract those two things, I'm going to figure out x. All right, so let's focus on the blue triangle first. If I have my 17 degree angle, the 7,500 is opposite. The bottom along the bottom is adjacent, so I'm going to use tangent. So tangent of 17 is to what's so opposite first, which is the 7,500, over the A value I'm trying to find. At this, I solve in two steps by multiplying by A. And then dividing by tangent of 17. So 7,500 over tangent of 17. And when we put that in the calculator, again, make sure your calculator is in degrees because there's two settings for these trig functions. We'll learn about the second setting next unit. But for now, I'm going to type in 7,500 divided by tangent of 17. Double checking my uh, calculator is in degrees. And I get 24531.4. All right, so that's the big distance there for A. All right, for B, it's the same thing. I'm going to have tangent of 38 is opposite over adjacent. Solve this in the same way, so B is going to be 7,500 divided by tangent of 38, which is 9599.6. Right. Again, like we said, our final answer X is when we're going to take that big distance A, which is pretty much how far the plane was at the start, minus b, which is how far away the plane is now. And if you subtract those two, it's how far the plane's moved. So I just take these two numbers and subtract them. Take me a second to type them in. I get 14, 3, or sorry, 14, 9, 3, 2. And it says to round to the nearest foot, so the whole number. So my calculator is actually saying 3, 1.8, but that 0.8 rounds it up to so 14,932 feet is how far the plane has moved. All right, so all these situations are going to be slightly similar, but just different uh, 
scenarios with boats and planes and things. All right, in this one, a boat is heading to a lighthouse whose beacon light is 400, uh, 142 feet above the water. So we have this lighthouse. All right, it has a light at the top and that's 142 feet. All right, from point A, the, there's a boat. All right, so point A, we have a boat. And they measure the angle of elevation to the beacon. So again, ele elevation means it's flat. And I'm looking up at this beacon, and that's a nine degree angle. All right, from another point, point B, that same boat measures the angle of elevation to be 25. And again, we want to figure out how far did the boat move from A to B. All right, so we're trying to find this distance. This one's slightly easier than the last one because that distance is actually already on our triangle. But we're going to solve it in the same way. So using the red triangle, we can find this big distance, A. The blue triangle, we can find the littler distance, B. Subtracting those two, we're going to get our answer. So let's just go through them real quick. Uh, to figure out A, we're going to have tangent again of 9. Opposite is 142. Over adjacent is the A we're trying to find. Multiply by A and divide 142 over tangent of 9. All right, for that lowercase b, we do the same thing, but with the 25 degree angle. Then the x value, the value we're actually trying to find is gonna be a minus b. So I can just type this in the calculator. I can type it all as one thing. So 142 divided by tangent of nine minus 142 divided by tangent of 25. All right, when I get that, I get 500 and 92. Again, I'm down to the nearest oh, tenth of a foot, so at this point I actually do not need a decimal, but it actually depends on the 592.03. So the nearest tenth is 592, just 0.0. All right, so there's no rounding because that three is smaller than five. All right, so this one, similar to the last one, I would actually slightly it easier when you think about the picture and what you have and what you need. All right, Madison is trying to find the height of a radio tower on the roof of a building, so why not just draw picture we have this building we have the antenna on the top she stands at a horizontal distance 25 meters from the building so she's gonna stand over here 25 meters away she's standing oops there the angle elevation from her eyes to the roof is 22 degrees so straight from her eyes to the top of the roof is 22 degrees. From her eyes to the top of the antenna, so again, straight from her eyes to the top of the antenna is 36 degrees. Right. And we know her eyes are 1.61 meters from the ground. All right. What is the height of the antenna? All right, so this extra information about her eyes being 1.61 feet is actually not necessary for this problem. There's some problems where at the end you have to like add this distance. Say I was trying to find the height of the building. I could find this part of the building, all right? And then I could find, uh, add on her height and actually gives me the full height of the building. But I don't care about the building in this case. I care about this antenna, which isn't related to her height at all. So this is actually extra information we won't need. Right, but how can we figure out what we do need? Again, we're thinking about our right triangles we have. We can find this big side here, using that uh, yellow right triangle, let's call that A. We can find this little distance here using our green tri right triangle B. And the actual value we want, the height of this antenna is when I subtract those two. All right, there are some cases where we have to add everyone we've done so far is subtracting. All right, but our, let's start with the yellow triangle to find A. Um, again, we don't know anything about the hypotenuse, so we're using tangent again. You end up using tangent a lot for these uh, word problems because a lot of times you don't know anything about the hypotenuse. All right, but this one's tangent of 36 is TOA. So in this case, it's A over 25. And again, this distance here, 25, is also that same distance there. In this case, solve it a little bit different than the previous example. You just multiply by 25. 25 tangent of 36 equals A. Then for our green triangle, tangent of 22 is B over 25 
multiply by 25, 25 tangent of 22 equals b. And then our x value is a minus b. So let's see, 25 tangent of 36 minus 25 tangent of 22. And we get 8.0629. When I round to the nearest tenth, which again means just one decimal place, so 8.1. All right, so for this last one, you could try to pause it real quick and try it on your own because it's similar to one that we have done before. But I will right, we'll just do this last example. Hopefully that's enough for you to kind of get a basic idea of how these uh, word problems are working. All right, but a boat is heading to our lighthouse where um, Jeriel is watching from 113 feet. So we have this lighthouse. Oops. There's our guy standing up there and he's 113 feet above the water. He measures an angle of depression from a point at boat A. So it, obviously the boat is gonna be on the water at point A. Right, but in this case, they're giving us an angle of depression. All right, so when he looks out flat and looks down at the boat, this angle is eight degrees. Right. At some point later, the boat has gotten closer. Now it's at point B. And now you had to look down again from the flat line down. You have to look at 52 degrees. Find the distance the boat traveled from A to B. As are similar to ones we've had before, right, but here's where you just have to kind of use things that are straight across from each other to help you. So first of all, if we look at our right triangles we have, if we draw a line straight up from B, we have a right triangle there, and straight up from A, we have a right triangle there. I don't have anything labeled on these ones, but the height of the lighthouse, if I just kind of slide that to the right, that's also the height of this red triangle and also the height of this blue triangle. So we do have an angle and a side All right, for each of these. And then we're gonna be able to find this whole side length. All right, we can call that A. We're gonna find this smaller side length of our blue triangle, call that B. And of course, as we've done multiple times, our actual X value that we care about is A minus B. Now, you don't have to call them the same things as me. As long as you know, you can kind of find these side lengths, subtract them to get what you want. Right? Again, like I've said a bunch of times, we don't normally know information about the uh, hypotenuse, because right? that's kind of where you're looking and you can't really measure that. So most of these use tangent. All right, let's do it in red to represent the red triangle. So tangent of eight. The opposite side is gonna be 113. The adjacent side is gonna be A. This is the one where we multiply first and then divide. I actually just write it out. So we multiply by A on both sides first, and then we divide by tangent of eight. All right, for B, for our blue triangle, again, it's not gonna be much different because our opposite side is still 113. And now our adjacent side is B. Multiply and divide. Oops. And finally, x is the bigger number a minus b. If you get a negative number, it just means you subtracted in the wrong order. But for us, it's 113 divided by tangent of 8 minus 113 divided by tangent of 52. All right, so when I do that, I get 715.7515 in the calculator. And we want to round to the nearest tenth of a foot. So again, one decimal place. My final answer is 715.8. All right, because that 5 here rounds that 7 up to 0.8. All right, so those are just some of the examples you'll see in 10.24. And just drawing the pictures, labeling what you know, remembering the difference in this problem, angle of depression is these angles from horizontal down. Angle of elevation is the horizontal up. All right, so these are the types of problems you'll see. They're all a little bit different because they're randomly generated. Uh, but if you can kind of understand these, it'll give you a basic idea of how to do the other ones.